What's going on, everybody? It's Rude Boy Jimmy. I'm here hanging out with Mr. Jason DeVore. You know him from Authority Zero. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? And we are hanging out at the grand opening of Club Red in Mesa Town, Arizona. Woo-wee! Oh, man. Yeah. And it is beautiful inside, I might say. Your wife did an immaculate job out there. Man, her and her entire team, like, I'm, I can't tell you, like, and no one's really going to understand the work that went into this place because, you know, they, they weren't here, obviously. But, I mean, I can just tell you, like, they've been working. Basically, I left the Canadian tour three weeks ago, almost of the day. And when I was last year looking at the venue and checking it out, the floors were completely jackhammered up. Like, there was rubble everywhere. There was no, nothing to walk on. It was all dust, dirt. You know, it was, it was insane. Like, the amount of work that they had to try and pull something like this off in that short amount of time, solely for this show in particular, you know. Definitely. They were definitely under the gun. And once we agreed that this was the route we wanted to go, to do, do the grand opening, to be a part of the grand opening here, you know, in Mesa Town and, and kick it off and try and set the bar for it and get it going, uh, it was like just game time. They had people staying here 24 hours a day. They were working around the clock. Wow. My wife was even in here carpeting the floors, like painting, just whatever she could do. You know, family, friends came out and helped out just to make it a reality. And it was, everyone's pretty tired, you know, here, but they, they're super proud and very, very excited about it, just as we are. It looks incredible. And, I mean, the, the old Club Red was awesome just as well, but this is really just another step up. I 100% I agree. I mean, it's got, it's got a it's bigger room for one. Um, it's got... You know, the parking, everybody knows, in the last Club Red location was horrible. Right. You know, there was nowhere to park, really. So this Share with the Waffle House. Yeah, yeah. And then there's always, like, the tow section right there, you know. So that's one great thing they've also got going is this giant parking lot out front. And they've got, like, 500 parking spaces at least, I think, if not more. And uh, it's all free parking here as well, you know, which is a nice extra bonus. And they're, you know, they're, trying to, they're really trying to do something cool here, you know. And I think that they've got the ability to do it just seeing what they've done to this point. Definitely. Yeah. And I mentioned uh, you just came back from Canada. Yes. And so i got to know, since it's Authority Zero, what kind of Canadian shenanigans did you guys have? I know your tour manager also uh, works for KUKQ Chavez. He was doing some yoga yeah. in his underwear. I didn't see that, thank God. I, <laughs> did, I think I missed that night. But we had all sorts of fun, man. It's like like our buddies that are here playing before us tonight, they're called Torch to Triggers. They're the reason we got to go up there again to Canada. And uh, it's their city release tour week, basically. So it was really more about them and just us, us getting a chance to get back up there and follow up our last tour there. Uh, but shenanigans, man, like every night was just fun. I don't know, you know, so we had, we had a lot of good times. We had a couple of days, only one, one or two days off. Uh, one was in Banff, you know, and, and we happened to have a fan up there that uh, last time around he told us he worked for this really, really nice um, townhouse type place, you know. Okay. Uh, but he's like, he's like, yeah, I'll give you guys two free rooms on the mountain. It's beautiful, the best jacuzzi ever. Last time we thought the guy was crazy. We we're, like, we're like, yeah, we're not canceling our rooms because then we're going right. to be fitting in our Some room. dude's got a, got a condo somewhere, and he's going to, you know, make a wind chime out of your gentle voice. Yeah, <laughs> that was exactly the thoughts. But we went for it this time, and we got there, and sure as, sure as hell, he, like, had two full-on three-level suites for us to stay in, and we just made the best of that room. Oh, yeah, easily, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, we, we carted it up pretty good, man. We had a good time just kind of celebrated up there in Banff, and it was the last day of the season for them, too, snow season, so there was a crazy... Tons of people in that town, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, coming back to the music, you know, you, you guys just had Tipping Point come out, uh, what, just about a year ago? Yep, last April. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's been a lot of big success, and it, uh, the way I see it and the way I've listened to it, it kind of reflects on a lot of your, like, previous albums. You know, there's some punk, some reggae. Is there some sort of specific formula or game plan you have when you lay out some of these albums? No, really that's kind of the plan. The game plan is not to have any specific game plan. You know, it's, it's really just write as much music as you can. Everybody's, you know, input is, is welcome, you know, and like different ideas just to keep it interesting, you know, and keep it, keep it genuine and don't make it, again, sound forced and just natural and feel good, you know. So the, the main goal with every album is to, this, this one main goal with this album in particular was, the one thing we said was, let's make sure that every song that goes to this album, we would have no problem playing a headlining set of just this album front to back and feel comfortable with it and strong that that was a good show. So that was kind of our main goal with this was to make sure that we were just happy as, as, a, as a group. Do you guys have any follow-up plans for the tipping point right now? Yeah, nothing super in particular, but we're, we're certainly riding still, you know, and um, yeah. like I said, we've been on the road since January 29th, so this is the last day, so it's going to take a breather, I think, a little bit for a couple of weeks, and then we'll probably get back at it and get some get some more solid ideas put together. Yeah, those are, that's a pretty extensive touring you guys are doing. Um, and then are you, are you, you guys are going to Europe, correct? We go to Europe on uh, Jan, oh, I'm sorry, July 20th, and we go all the way through August, and then from there we get home for about 10 days, and then we, fly, well, I'm sorry, then we start a tour 
to follow up our Atari has run around the entire United States for about two months. Oh, okay. Wow. And we'll open up probably three quarters of the year this year. Yeah, then you're on the road a lot. In that case, um, ideas for music, that sort of thing, pop up along the way. Yeah. Um, and now, back when Authority Zero started, 20 years ago. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm dating myself because, I mean, that was that was huge for me in high school, too. You know? Yeah. Um, middle school, high school. I mean, it was just crazy. Um, now you've got, you know, so many years later, there's new members that have come into the band, and it's uh, they've brought their own sound, that sort of thing. And then in the same light, back in the day, it was kind of like you had to go rehearse and write stuff in your garage, your practice space or whatever. But now that there's so much evolution in technology where you can rehearse on the Internet or, or write on the Internet, how do you think the evolution of technology has kind of gone along with the evolution of the band with new sound that sort of thing uh, we haven't used so much the technology you know, the, the sense of like you said with the writing process because it's just the way it is nowadays obviously like you said people have been coming and going out of this band since like 2007 you know so I mean since that point it's been a lot of different influence coming in and out you know and uh, it's been a little tricky at times as far as even just getting people together to practice um, but nowadays especially it's you know we've got one guy living in Texas we've got one guy who's if not back home in Santa Barbara, he's on tour with his other band, Good Riddance, like doing other right. tours, so it's hard to keep in contact in that regard. But, um, you know, luckily Mikey lives here, so me and Mikey play together a lot around town, acoustic, doing our stuff, so we're always kind of messing around and writing stuff together. So with that, we come up with some ideas, and just, it's just, it just helped in that sense of, like, sending us an email or a, a little video or audio clip over, you know, and be like, hey, check this out, work up this for a minute, what do you think, you know, and then sure. just to send back and forth. It's, it's helped considerably, I think, with just the way the band has ended up at this point in time. Sure. It's just easier to, like you're saying, just to kind of send a clip back and forth and uh, um, use Skype, that sort of thing, I guess, to just yeah, to communicate, yeah. especially with such distance. That's how much you know, technology has helped, I guess. Yeah, you really could do like a full-on band practice on Skype alone. You right. know, like do a four-way call kind of thing, I think. You know, it's just, it's insane. It's insane with how far that stuff comes come. But it has been, to answer, yeah, beneficial completely for us at this time of frame. That's awesome. I know uh, a lot of bands have started doing that, so it's cool to see, you know, just the evolution of technology with the bands and kind of, that, that sort of thing. So yeah. that's very cool. Yeah, that's great. It's a tough question, but out of the entire Authority Zero catalog, which song or songs, you can, you can pick a couple if you want, that uh, do you think um, have impacted you the most? Or that, that are the deepest heartfelt songs for you? Uh, in all reality, A Passage of Time is a big, big one for me. It was the first song on the first record we actually full length released. And, that's just one of those songs to me, like, every time we play it live, it's never, it never gets old. Like, our entire set can suck, you know, as far as, like, audience participation goes or if we're just, like, tired or whatever. But that's always, like, been the song to me that, like, you start playing that one and it just wakes everybody up. It brings everybody back to life, you know what I mean? And it takes me back to, you know, we played Edge Fest many, many years ago. And, uh, you know, we played later in the day. And I just remember we started off that song and those kids came fucking on and tore the stage. And you're just like, it was the coolest visual from where we were standing to see that happen you know and it just it stands out to me a little bit in that memory you know and um, so Passage in Time is a big one another big one is uh, uh, I mean obviously you know there's one more minute that, that gave us a, a big stepping stone into the national touring to be a national touring act really you know and that's just kind of like it was you got to pay homage to that you know as much as you you do get sick of playing the old stuff like that consistently you, you can't you can't hate on it you can't really not you know, right. Yeah, you, some you, people have not playing it either. Because yeah, exactly. Like, it was such a good song that did such great things to help us go in the right direction. So, um, there's probably two the one, you know, two that you know from the past history at least. You know, a lot, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the songs on the new record really reflect um, a lot of what it, you know I personally have been through uh, with this band, you know, over some time and just uh, seeing it still breathe and you know and, and come to life as, as it still does. I mean, with a whole other light. Um, it's got a lot of personal meaning on, on that record. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. I really appreciate it. I know you got a lot going on tonight with the opening of Club Red here. Yeah, we're, we're, still, we're super excited. Everybody, please check it out. If you haven't checked out this show, just get down here. Check it out. Support the club. Uh, it's, they, you know, they basically built it for you here locally, and just it's up to you guys to build it and make it something great. So. And I want to say tonight's show is sold out, if I remember correctly. It is sold out. So wow. thank everybody out there so very much for giving a damn and you know coming out, supporting <laughs> local music, and giving new opportunities and new venues and businesses a chance. So it's, it's all because of you guys. It's going to work out. So Support local music. Support local music. Do not stop. Jason DeVore and I'm Rude Boy Jimmy. This is KUKQ, Arizona's Alternative.